today I'm going to show you how to smooth values in the new input system. So for example, usually when you press a key on the keyboard, it returns either 0 or 1. But let's say for your character you want to smoothly interpolate between your input so that you can smooth out either the movement or the animation. For example, if I start running, you'll see that it'll start off slowly and then go into a full sprint. And this is because we are interpolating manually in the code. So unfortunately, the new input system does not have a way to directly do this like the old one. For example, in the old one, you can just call get axis. And even if you're on your keyboard, it will kind of interpolate the value for you. So it'll smooth out that value. However, for the new input system, we'll have to do that manually in code. So to better show you what's going on, I've downloaded this visualizer package from window package manager input system. And then under the samples visualizers, and currently it's using this move input action, which is of value and control type of stick. So right now it's bound to the left stick on a gamepad and D-pad, which is bound to our keyboard, WASD. So if I press play and I press WASD, you'll see that it goes from zero to one rather quickly. And you'll see that when I'm pressing on two keys diagonally, it'll stop at 0.7 and 0.7. And this is because this vector is normalized. And normalized just means this has a length of one. And normalized is good for directional vectors, so you're going in a certain direction. So it doesn't interpolate for the keyboard, but if we use the gamepad now, you'll see that it does track all of the movements on the joystick. So with the gamepad, you're going to get these smooth value because it does return all of the movements on the joystick. So to smooth this, we can do this manually in code. Quick thing I want to mention is that for these WASD values that we're using, it was normalized. So if you don't want it to be normalized, you can just put digital instead of digital normalized. Digital just means it's either zero or one, whereas analog means you get the full range of floating point values, which in this case for a keyboard, it's gonna still be either zero or one because it's a button that we're pressing. We're either pressing it or not, but that's basically the difference between these three. All right, so in my third person scene, I already have a player controller set up with a player input component. And you'll see that what I'm doing here is in the update function, I'm reading our move action, which is a vector two with WASD and gamepad. And then I'm putting that into a vector three and then I'm moving the controller. I'm using the player input component and make sure you're using the input system namespace. So you can read the value, but this isn't gonna be smoothed out, especially with the keyboard. So before passing it into anything, we can smooth it manually. And there's a couple ways to do this. You can either lerp the value, slurp the value, or do a smooth damp. Now, personally, I like the smooth damp because it kind of gives a feeling of accelerating at the beginning and decelerating at the end when you slow down. So for example, here's the documentation. It gradually changes the vector towards a desired goal over time. And you can use this for a vector two, vector three, or a float. For example, if you wanna use it with a float, just use mathf.smoothdamp and it's pretty similar in terms of the parameters it takes in. So Freya Homer on Twitter showed a quick example of lerp versus slurp. Lerping is just linearly interpolating as so, same speed, while slurping has more of a gradual increase and decrease. And this Reddit post describes the difference between lerp and slurp. You can see that the lerp is over time while the smooth damp is accelerating and decelerating smoothly. The slurp looks different because it's mostly used for directions and not for positions. So in this case, we'll go with smooth damp. So now we can smooth the input. If we do vector two dot smooth damp, you'll see that it takes a current and a target. So we have to keep track of our input. So let's just put a variable up here and we can do private vector two current input vector. Copy that name. And we can just put that one as the current. So that's our current. Our target is our input that we're reading now. Then we need a reference to the current velocity, which we need to pass it in here. And all that does is populate that current velocity with the velocity of this smooth damp. So for example, up here, we can just declare another variable, private vector two, smooth input velocity, and copy that. And then back here, you can just put ref smooth input velocity. So we're passing in a reference and this will get populated within this smooth damp function. We don't really need to use this, but we need to pass it in. And then we can pass in a smooth time and the maximum speed. So smooth time is basically how fast you want this to smooth. So we can just call this smooth input speed. And then if you want, you can pass in a maximum speed. However, I know that this input is getting clamped at one. So I know that the maximum will be one. So I can just erase that. So let's declare this smooth input speed at the top. I like to make this a serialized field and do a private float 
smooth input speed, and we can just give it a value of maybe 0.2. So now we can change this in the inspector and play around with the values. So now that we have this smooth damp function, we have to actually equal it to something. So we can get this current input vector and equal it to that. So this is basically storing our current input for the next time that we use it. And now instead of using the input here, as we were doing previously, we can replace it with the current input vector and it will be smoothed over time. So now in the editor, I have this player script attached. If I press play, I've put the speed to zero just to see. So if we run, we'll see that it does look like it's damping a little, but that's because of the animation. If I put it to zero, you'll see that it doesn't look very slow at all. And I'm printing out the values down here. So you'll see that once we press a value, it switches immediately to negative one or one. But now if I put the value to 0.2, for example, for the smooth, you'll see that if I press A, it'll go to the value smoothly over time. And it generally looks more smooth. And so you can do this for your input and both for your animation. So once you have smooth input and smooth animation, your character will look much more natural. And if it's slow, you can always increase your player speed so that it reacts better. Whee! So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and that it was useful to you. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so that you can get notified on upcoming releases. And with that, I'd like to thank my patrons. Thank you so much for all of your support. It really makes these videos possible. I'd like to thank my new patrons. And I apologize in advance if I pronounce some of these names incorrectly. In the enthusiastic tier, we have Young Hangwen, Mert Taylan, The Ghoster, Stefan, Sujimaru, Rudo K, Pong Sothorn, Ari, Andy, Lance, Danger Dan 2, Ricardo, Mingi Hong, Aaron K, and Taznim. Thank you so much for the support, I really appreciate it. And in the dedicated tier we have a wild hippie. Thank you so much once again for all of your support, I really appreciate it. If you're interested in supporting me, the link is in the description, it'll help me out a lot and will encourage me to continue making these kinds of videos. I offer source code, early access, and an exclusive Discord channel. And if you aren't already on our Discord channel, be sure to join. You can chat, post memes, or ask for help. So thanks again for watching, and see you next time.